Hey, Daring Faith Groups, it is so good to be with you. Of course, I wish I could be with each group individually, but that's not possible. Since we have groups now all over northern Colorado, we got a group in the mountains, we got we have a group in Portland, Oregon, one in Indiana, Illinois, a couple of them in Florida. Daring Faith is catching on steam. You're part of something very significant. In fact, I learned this week, we have 19 groups that are being led by first-timers or co-led by first-timers. And that's part of our 49 groups. We have two groups that are over 40 people in them. I mean, you are people of daring faith, bold risk takers, congratulations. And it's good to be with you. In every week of our series, I've been talking about the vision of our church, why God gave birth to our church 20 years ago. I, I think it's so important that we understand the why of why what we what we're doing why do we do what we do week in and week out why do we gather as we do 52 weeks a year that vision is found in Matthew 28 19 and 20 some of you could say it with me by now Jesus said go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and then he said and I'll be with you always. And he's with us. And Jesus is with us during this Daring Faith campaign. And that's the mission that God has given us. Reach people for Jesus Christ. Our church exists to help more and more lives be transformed. More and more growing disciples. More people learning to love God and love each other. More people coming to Christ. That's why we exist. And I say this over and over because... I've seen it happen in churches, not in a day, a week, or a month, but churches can forget why they exist, why Jesus said, here's what you're to do. And we are bold proclaimers of the only message, I believe, that can change the direction of a human life, a human heart, change an entire life. And I would just ask this question, are we pretty much done with that vision that Jesus gave us to do? Are we, uh, have we accomplished that vision? Are we done? Are we even near the finish line here in Northern Colorado? Well, I'd, uh, I'd ask the question this way. How many people do you think are part of a church community in the weekend in Northern Colorado? According to the Pew Research Center, we are in living in one of the fastest growing areas of the country. Now that's those of us in Colorado. Uh, we're, but we're also in the top 10 least churched areas of the country. 15 to 8 percent of people are part of a church community here in northern Colorado. And in fact, we rank near the bottom nationally when it comes to people even saying in surveys that religion is an important part of their life. We're 41st when people are asked that question. We're 45th in the nation when it comes to people even believing in God. So I'd say we've got a long way to go here in the mission that God has given us. In fact, where our church sits in my office right here at 57th and Taft, there's about 300, 400,000 people in a 20 mile radius here. If 15 to 18% are in church, that means 60,000 people are part of a church community. 85% or 340,000 people are not part of any church community. They're not meeting weekly, hearing about the God who made them and loves them and that they could give their life to Jesus Christ and to live for him. And so I'd go, uh, we got a long way to go. I mean, those kind of statistics cause great concern, but they also cause great opportunity for us. And I go, if we're, meet, if we're reaching uh, 15 to 18% of the population, uh, you know, we have a long way to go. Actually, uh, we're not even close to that finish line. And that's what Daring Faith is all about. Daring Faith is an opportunity to reach more people for Christ. And you have a brochure that I think the life group leaders have. It looks like this. And I'd like right now for the life group leaders to take a moment and to pass one of these out to everyone. Well, go ahead and uh, read through that entire brochure on your own, but I, like, I want to highlight a few spots on it. I like it where it says our history is one of daring faith and loving sacrifice, and it really is. Crossroads has a 
20-year track record of attempting huge projects with God and expecting great things from God. Many people in our area have benefited from some of our signature programs that are listed there, like Project One and Special Needs Ministry, Clean Water for Haiti, and AIDS Relief in Africa and in, in our own area, Habitat for Humanity Partnerships, uh, Covenant Kids Congo. We sponsored kids in the Congo, uh, Celebrate Recovery, Colorado Flood Relief, support groups and many ministries to children and students. In every program, everything that has happened here at Crossroads is a result of donations and sacrifice and generosity of ordinary people, just like you and me. And to make these things happen, some people have given up uh, comfort and sacrificed their plans. They cut back on their spending. People changed vacations and uh, limited their purchases and downsized all kinds of things to make this a reality. In fact, getting started in 1995, we did our, our very first campaign before the doors even opened. We had 60 people in the church and we made a pledge and we wrote them on paper. We ripped it off. We turned one into a baseball hat and then we kept the other so that we would know what we pledged. No names on them. And that group pledged $70,000 that first year. That's how we got up and going initially. Then we had the Building for a Lifetime campaign. Year was 2000 to 2003. Second campaign, 357 families from Crossroads gave $1.6 million over three years. That's in addition to the regular giving. And we purchased the 73 acres of land right here at 57th and Taft, created a site plan, and we broke ground. And then in 2003, we had the Time to Build campaign. After renting 12 different locations over eight and a half years, the Crossroads family gave $1 million now over and above regular giving to finish this facility and we were able to move in and have our first services. Then we did a C3 campaign in 2006. This was Christ, Community, Compassion, C3, our fourth campaign. And we focused on funding our special needs ministry for the first time and we opened a new church in Greeley, and established global partnerships in China and in South Africa. And Crossroads Faith Champions, Daring Faith Champions back then, gave 1.9 million over and above regular giving during those three years. And now today, Daring Faith. It's our fifth, our fifth and largest campaign. And God's gonna accomplish great things in and through us. And I wanna talk about the goals of Daring Faith. And so you can find those in the brochure if you open it up and it's the acrostics, faith, and I'll talk about each one. The F stands for fill. This is our first goal. We wanna fill God's house with 5,000 worshipers by our 25th year. That's the year 2020. 2020, 5,000 people. Why would we do that? Well, Jesus said in Luke 14, 23, he said, urge anyone you find to come so that my house will be full. This goes right along with our, our vision to reach people. And we're going to open two to five multi-sites in the next five years. And a multi-site by definition is taking the church to areas where we're not reaching with much effectiveness. And part of the challenge today is that people are more regionalized than ever before. People are no longer willing to drive 20, 30 miles to a church like they were at one time or have their kids involved in a program or students, and they live 20, 30 miles away. And so God is talking to us. God has been saying, you've got to take the church where people are. And a multi-site would do that. And a multi-site would have a, a campus pastor who would build relationships, life groups, classes right there. And then there'd be a live worship team, just like at 57th and Taft here, children's ministry, and all of that. But multi-site campuses are happening all over the country. In fact, currently, 3,000 churches are sending multi-sites out of their church. And that, that translates into over 5,000, no, it's 8,000 different multi-sites in America. Over 5 million people are worshiping in multi-site churches today. That's 10% of Protestants in the United States. So this is something that's happening and we're gonna open two to five in the next five years. 
The A of faith uh, stands for assist. We want to assist more people with needs through local and global programs of care and support. And we're going to devote at least 10% of all the revenue from Daring Faith to different compassion projects. We're going to build our own special needs ministry more, but then we're going to start new and partner with other global and local community partnerships like Ellie's Deli and Lago Vista and Community Kitchen in Loveland and Congo Clinic Initiative. We're going to be part of sponsoring medical clinics in the Congo, and we have committed to establishing two of those. But this is just like our C3 campaign where we got involved in HIV AIDS ministry and in Northern Colorado and Africa and dug wells in Haiti and partnered with churches in the Gulf Coast. Daring Faith is no different. So we plan to allocate at least 10% of all the offering, all the giving to Compassion Projects, because that's the heart of Crossroads for 20 years, to be a church of generosity and that we'd be making a difference in the community and the world. I stands for interact. We're gonna interact with our growing church community by enhancing our campus environments in new technology. And we're gonna transform our, our entrances, our atrium, east patio, our chapel into dynamic gathering places. We're gonna upgrade technology. And this is necessary so that we'll be able to project uh, to those multi-site campuses. The T stands for train, 25% of our church family to be skilled leaders in the church and community. We have to always remember, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. And so we're going to be that in our community. And one thing we're going to do is train, train leaders right here. We're beginning an internship program for students. And interns would come from our own church, but they'd also come from outside our church. College students would come here and learn ministry and is coming alongside of all of us. And then also we're going to add a new teaching pastor to our staff. That's part of this goal, the T, the train goal, that'll help us reach more and more young people and young families in the church. You know, our young people in the church, they can relate to our band, our singers, and me, but we want them to relate to other people other than just a few of us. But uh, I'm very excited about adding a new teaching pastor and a younger one, and we've already begun the process of finding that new teaching pastor. The H stands for help. We're going to help the next generation to grow because Jesus said, let the little children come unto me for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And how are we going to do that? We're going to develop the entire growth theme in our preschool area downstairs. And then we're going to also do some renovation on the student center. The student center is a dynamic place where young people can come and not, not just learn about the faith their parents have, but they can make this faith in Jesus Christ their own. And so we're gonna invest in that. But I'm convinced our best days are ahead of us. They really are. And that's why God is challenging us with the most ambitious, faith-stretching, creative campaign that we have ever done. And what's it gonna take? It's gonna take a, a dream of $2.5 million to accomplish this. And how are we gonna accomplish it? We can accomplish it through the people of Crossroads stepping out in faith, daring to commit to this campaign. And we've got, I know this brings up a lot of questions and comments that you have. And we have a FAQ sheet here that our, our life group leaders are going to hand out in a moment. But I know all of this brings questions to your mind. And you might be thinking right now, what do, you, what do I like? What do I resonate with? What needs clarification? And uh, why don't, in fact, why don't, right now, why don't the hosts pass out that FAQ sheet? Well, I know this brings up a lot of questions and we want to respond to those questions. So we've created a uh, email address, daringfaith at crossroadscolorado.com. Email us those questions and we'll get back to you. Well, here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you first to begin praying and asking God what your financial commitment to Daring Faith will be. I'm asking everybody in the church to make a 24-month financial commitment 
over and above regular giving to make this vision a reality. And I'm asking people to just say, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do towards daring faith? And then just be faithful to whatever God says for you to do. This is what Phyllis and I are doing right now. We're asking God, God, what would you have us commit over and above our regular giving? And then, then really, we're just going to have the faith, whatever God says. We're gonna, that's what we're going to do. So we're asking everybody to make that 24-month commitment and ask God to uh, what he would have you do and then just do that. And the second thing is celebration weekend is May 21st, 22nd. Mark it on your calendar. It's going to be a great weekend of worship, uh, inspiration, and we're going to make our commitments that day. And we're going to fill out this card that you'll be handed to uh, in just a moment. And we'll be able to check on there whether we're giving weekly, monthly, uh, yearly, whatever that would be. And then I'm asking everybody on that weekend to not only make their commitment, but make their first offering towards whatever that commitment would be, like your first installment of whatever your 24-month commit, commitment would be. But that's on May 21, 22. It's going to be the culmination of the series. It's going to be a fantastic celebration. But daring faith is so important. I, I don't say this lightly. I believe from a long-term standpoint, this is going to be one of the most significant things that we do with our life, because this is with our lives, because this is something that's going to live on way beyond us. We're going to leave a legacy to our children and our children's children, future generations through daring faith. And you know, God is saying to us, there's thousands and thousands of people out there that, have, that don't know the God who made them and loves them. And God is counting on the witness of our church to burn brighter than ever to be a place of hope in the future. That's what Daring Faith is all about. And I'm so glad that we're all in this together. Well, let's pray together right now. So if you would, would you bow your head with me? Dear God, I uh, thank you for each person that's here. I thank you for each group, everyone that has stepped out in faith, some people in a group for the very first time ever, some people leading groups for the first time, people that are part of them. God, thank you for each. I ask that you would bless each person. And thank you for the sacrifices that have been made by people here uh, of time, talents, resources to make Crossroads a place of hope and a special place to everyone that comes in our doors. And God, again, use daring faith to challenge our church. Use daring faith to stretch our faith as you build something significant for Jesus Christ through all of us, something that'll make a lasting impact in our community, our region, our state, and the world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. sure this is bringing up a lot of questions that you have. And if you have other questions that you'd like to ask at any time, we set up an email address, daringfaith at crossroadscolorado.com, and you can send those questions. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's where you could send them? Is that a website or is that an email address? <laughs> it's what? an email address. It's an email. So I was right. You were right. Okay, okay let's start on. again. <laughs>